It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this special edition of Science Bowl. The two teams you're about to meet have won once already and today's winner becomes the second of the four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition, joining Thomas Pullen. Let's meet our teams now. First from Martin Luther King Middle School, please say hello to Ann Therese Greaves, her brother Liam Greaves, and Zachary Landau. And from Oxon Hill Middle School, please welcome Vaughn Vivitt, Marcus Cooper, and Shannon Timble. And now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, our game board reflects question difficulty with the easier questions worth five and 10 points, the tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds today, we will have our second semifinalist. Let's make sure everything works properly. Liam, would you try your buzzer for us? Thank you. Good luck to you, to Ann, Teresa, and to Zachary. And Marcus, try yours. Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, and to Vaughn, and to Shannon. Boy, you guys are been terrific in our competition. All of your winners thus far. May the better team win. We go alphabetically M before O. So Martin Luther King, let's play the bowl. Let's get physical for 15, please. Get physical for 15 points. Teams, you should never heat your house by using a gas stove because what deadly <laughs> gas? Martin Luther King. Carbon monoxide. Yes, indeed. CO, carbon monoxide, can build up a deadly gas because you can't see it, you can't smell it, but it can cause death very, very quickly. Go, red. Dateline science for 15, please. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, what famous scientists we associate with the laws of gravitation and movement also dabbled in alchemy? Marcus. Isaac Newton. That is, that would be he, absolutely right. Go, green. Uh, green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, every year the story of the great pumpkin appears in the comic strip named for what leguminous plant, Liam? Peanut. Peanuts, that's right, good. Red. Zoo Parade for 15, please. Zoo Parade, 15 points. Teams, look at the monitor, please, in the studio for this question. Teams, this tiny little animal is a shrew, one of the tiniest animals on Earth. But because of its proboscis, it is actually named for what largest land animal on Earth? <coughs> Liam. Elephant. That's called the elephant shrew. Absolutely right. Good. Red. Body systems for 15, please. Body systems, 15 points. Teams. What kinds of patients would you find in a hospital's neonatal intensive care unit? Martin Luther King? Um, patients with brain damage? No. Oxen Hill, what kind of patients would you find in a hospital's neonatal intensive care unit? Um, uh, what is it? We yes. don't have an answer. Again? No, no answer. answer? We have a future pediatrician over there. Babies. Babies, neonatal, tiny babies, little old babies, preemie babies. Good. Red, please. Dateline signs for 10, please. Dateline for 10. Teams, just last week, an elementary school in New Jersey, children released balloons to celebrate their teacher's engagement. They floated, the balloons did, over New York City. The people looked up. They thought they were from outer space. They called them what? Oxen Hill? UFOs. UFOs, that's right. They were People were calling up the police. There are UFOs over Manhattan. Go, green. Green things for 15. Green things, 15 points, teams. Because they contain the very hot spice capsaicin, what hot vegetables are eaten by no Martin Luther King? Chili peppers. Chili peppers. 
Only human beings eat them. Animals won't touch them. Maybe they're smart. Go, Red. Science potpourri for 10, please. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, what illegal, illicit, hallucinogenic drug is actually being prescribed? Oxen Hill? Marijuana. Marijuana, yes, for some patients that suffer from certain diseases like MS and also glaucoma, a condition of hardening in the eye. All right, score 85-105. Martin Luther King is ahead, but the last correct answer came from Marcus. Go, young man. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, there are certain kinds of terms that are called oxymorons, like genuine imitation or jumbo shrimp. Well, if you like the taste and smell of barbecue, but you don't want to actually barbecue, you can buy yourself an oxymoronic bottle of liquid what? Bar Oxen Hill. Barbecue sauce? No, not barbecue sauce. Liquid what is oxymoronic because you get the taste and smell of barbecue, but you don't have to actually barbecue. Nitrogen? Liquid smoke. Liquid smoke. Go green. Go. Uh, green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, 68 feet, nine inches is the Guinness record for spitting these seeds. Martin Luther King. Watermelon? Watermelon seeds, I was about to say, from this standard picnic fruit. And that would be it. Red. Zoo parade for 10, please. Zoo parade, 10 points. Teams, what mammal, the only flying mammal on Earth, has afflicted Martin Luther King? Bat? Bats, yes, they're afflicted by a white nose fungal disease that is wiping out many of the populations. A very serious issue. All right, 120 to 85. The lead still Martin Luther King's. Go, Liam. Body systems for 10, please. For 10 points under body systems, multiple choice question. Teams, John Paul Jones said, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. Was he talking about the retina? The, yes, Martin Luther King. The pupil? The pupil? Not the pupil, no. When John Paul Jones said, don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes, was he talking about the eyes retina, cornea, or sclera? Which part is the white of the eye? Sclera? Sclera, you got that. Good comeback. Go green. Uh, bottom si body systems for 25, please. Body systems for 25, the big one in that category, teams. Just this week, doctors say there is some promising hope because if you take insulin and you inject it up into your nose, you breathe it into your nose, it can affect your brain and maybe forestall the personality robbing disease that we know as Oxen Hill for 25 points. Bipolar? No, not bipolar, good try. The personality robbing disease in the brain that may be helped by inhaling insulin is known as? Um, uh, craziness? Alzheimer's disease, Alzheimer's disease. The buzzer has rung, our first round is over. Our score, 120 for Martin Luther King, 95 for Oxen Hill right behind. We'll be back with this important game in just a moment. And welcome back to Science Ball. Thank you for spending part of your day with us in this, our 25th silver anniversary year here on channels 96 and 38 in the Prince George's County Public Schools. See if you can keep up with these very fine students. Let's talk to them first before we ask any more scientific questions. A few personal ones. Let's go to Martin Luther King over there in Beltsville. Robin Wilteson, your esteemed principal, and Miss Elizabeth Reyes is the sponsor of Note. She has been with us for many, many years. Liam. Nice to have you back. Tell us why you like being on Science Bowl. I love Science Bowl because I love the riddles and I love the fact that there are so many different ways it can stimulate your mind. Wow, and uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do. This young man has been on our show for a number of years, starting with his appearance at Bond Mill when he was in elementary school, and he's just as sharp and wonderful as a player as, as we could hope for here. And someday you hope to be a chemist. Is that right? Yes, sir. And, and you have had an interest in chemistry as long as we've known you. His sister, Ann Therese, is here, and uh, you would not ever not think that they were brother and sister. You guys really look alike. You're a good-looking pair of young people over here. Tell us, Ann Therese, about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Well, I just like to draw and read my books in my bunk bed, just yeah. sitting around in the quiet. <laughs> And, and there are a lot of things that you like to do. You're, you aspire to be an actress and a marine biologist and all kinds of... Tell us the other things you're thinking about. Soccer. I want to be a professional soccer player. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, pretty much that's all. If That's more than enough. That is certainly more than enough. Now, you play soccer, your brother plays soccer, and Zach plays soccer. And uh, so you guys not only are good players, but I guess maybe good friends off the set as well. Zach has been with us for many years as well, uh, starting with Bond Mill, 
and hopes to do something in science someday, yeah? Yeah. Why do you like about, what do you like about Science Bowl? Because you keep coming back, Zach. We love having you. I, I like, like everything about it. I just like coming here and being here, like with the science around. That's right. And of course, I know the papers have followed your career as well. And I've got pictures of you guys when you were smaller. And the, it's nice to see you grow up here on camera. Oxen Hill, nice to have you guys here today. They're wearing different colored shirts because they're different grade levels. Our eighth grader is our main man over there, Marcus, in the center. And on either side of him, the seventh graders, uh, Shannon and Vaughn. Nice to have you with us today. Marcus, you are so sharp. You know so much about science. How do you know so much? Well, my parents always try, tell me to strive for better. Life. And boy, I know, I know how proud they are of you because I know the kind of hard work you have put in. And who's the principal uh, at your school, by the way? Mr. Sharif Saleh. I know he's proud of you too and he's out there. And they weren't just uh, practicing on their own. You had not one, not two, not three, but I think uh, like five sponsors on your team. Yeah. Who were they? Miss Bugensen, Miss Le Miss Redman, Miss Miss Gravera and Miss Hall. Yeah, that's a long list to remember. You did well with a little help from your your uh, co-workers over there, your colleagues, and of course I know you've been practicing, and that has really paid off. You're doing a fine job here, Marcus. What do you want to do someday? I want to be a chef. A chef, that's right. He, you want to go to the Baltimore International School, right? Yeah. Which is a hospitality-oriented uh, school up there in Baltimore. You'd be very good at that. I can see you're a people person. Vaughn, nice to have you back with us, young lady who plays violin. Yes. Yeah. Um, what got you interested in the violin? Did someone give one to you, or how'd you get intrigued by it? Well, like, I saw some videos, and, like, they played so smoothly, so I want to become like one. Wow. That, yeah, that was a good way to get intrigued by something. You know, if you see it uh, uh, portrayed, that's a, a lot of us. We see things in the movies. We read things in books. I want to be just like that. Uh, tell me what you do in your spare time if you're not playing the violin. Well, um, sometimes I read books about... Um, <coughs> heroes about that stuff, and um, listen to music and play with my friends. Wonderful. And Shannon, uh, I made reference earlier to pediatrics, because I know you're interested in being a pediatrician, neonatal, uh, the, the, the preemie babies that are in hospitals. How'd you get interested in pediatrics? Well, I was interested um, by my own doctor, because he I liked how he was um, always helping little kids, and they were always happy that they were treated so well, so that's how I got interested. And I think it, 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 you have to have a calm demeanor and not get all upset because you can't scare children when they come into that foreign, threatening environment. And I, you have that nice manner about you. I can see you being successful at that. Let's get back into our game. Oxen Hill 95, Martin Luther King 120. Lots of points to give away. We have a semifinalist slot at stake here. Let's get back to it. Last correct answer came from Marcus. Go. Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, it's appropriate that a crash describes a group of these one and sometimes two horned African pachyderms. Martin Luther King. Uh, rhinos. Rhinos, that's right, a crash of rhinos, like a herd of elephants. Good. Martin Luther King. Science potpourri for 15, please. Potpourri for 15 points, teams. This is a little bit disgusting, but some people who suffer from bacterial infections in their intestines that will not heal are now getting fecal. Tra Oxen Hill. They're getting colonoctomies. They're not getting colonoscopies, no. Martin Luther King, people who have these seemingly incurable infections in their intestines are getting fecal transplantations, meaning they're being given what? Lining. Again? They're being given lining. Lining? Yep. Not lining, no. They're actually getting solid waste, poo, from somebody else that is infused into their intestine replenishing their intestinal flora, and it seems to help. It was on Gray's Anatomy. Sometimes the quest these questions, they make a little bit squeamish, aren't they? Go red. Let's get physical for 10, please. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Birds and bees can see this kind of light that we can't, that's at the far end. Martin Luther King. Ultraviolet? Yeah, they can see ultraviolet at the far end of the visible spectrum, red. Let's get physical for 20, please. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. You know, normally comets have tails, but another kind of celestial body was recently noted to have a tail. Martin Luther King. A meteorite? Not a meteorite. Oxen Hill, the other kind of celestial body that recently was discovered to have a tail is the kind that normally orbits between the planets Mars and Jupiter. Asteroid? That's what I want to hear. Good answer. Thank you for your assist there, Shannon. All right, takes you up to 115 to 135. Close game. Green. 
Science potpourri for 20, please. Science potpourri for 20 points and a tie score. If you get this, listen carefully, teams. The four most important crops in the United States are corn, wheat, soybeans, and hay. Corn, wheat, soybeans, and hay. Three of them are grasses. One is not. Which one isn't? Which one isn't Oxen Hill? Corn. Not corn. Nope. Corn, wheat, hay, and soybeans. Three are grasses. One is not, Liam. Soybeans? Soybeans, correct. Yes, soybean is not a grass. The other three are red. Body systems for 20, please. Body systems for 20 points, team. Some multiple choice question. If someone is suffering from osteosarcoma, osteosarcoma, they most likely have a tumor in their intestine, in their brain, or on a bone. Martin Luther King. On a bone? On a bone. Osteo was your clue there. Osteo prefix meaning the skeletal system. Red, please. Zooprade for 20, please. Zooprade for 20. Teams, your question is as follows. Audubon, of course, is associated with birds, but he also wrote a book called The Quadrupeds of North America. Martin Luther King. Four-legged animals? Four-legged animals, absolutely right. Bipedal animals like us, quadrupeds, quad meaning four. Good, thank you, Zach. Red. Green things for 20, please. Green things for 20 points. Look at the monitor, please, in the studio for this question, if you would. Teams, this looks like a forest. Actually, you're looking at broccoli. Broccoli looks like little trees. The stalk of broccoli is like the trunk of a tree. And instead of the crown being leaves on broccoli, you're looking at what? What's on the top of the broccoli? Oxen Hill. What's on the top of the Yes, sir. Um. Yes? Uh, We're going to have to go to Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, if broccoli are little trees, the stalk of the broccoli is like the trunk of the tree, but instead of leaves atop the trunk, what are you looking at? Buds. Buds, that's right. Flower buds. Good. Go. Red. Dateline science for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, this year's winner of the Nobel Prize in medicine won it because he discovered how to produce a test tube baby. Martin Luther King? Yes, sir? Uh, Robert? Not quite. I was not looking who won. The question is, the winner of the Nobel Prize in Medicine won it because he found out how to produce a test tube baby, which is more scientifically known as in vitro what? In vitro. Oxen Hill, what do you think? Um, it is in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is the technical way of describing a test tube baby. Try again, red. Green things for 25, please. Green things for 25. The big one in that category, teams, a bald cypress tree is an anomaly. It's an unusual tree. It is a deciduous conifer, meaning every year it does what? Every year it does what for 25 points, Martin Luther King? It loses its needles. That's exactly right. It loses its needles because the needles are associated with a conifer. Good. Red. Zoo parade for 25, please. Zoo parade for 25. Big one in that category, teams. Multiple choice question. For the first time in 20 years, we have discovered a brand new mammal that is a carnivore. Is the new creature that lives in Madagascar near a lake a pygmy hippopotamus, a sloth, or a mongoose? Martin Luther King. A mongoose? Mongoose, the only carnivore among that group. Yes, good, go. Let's get physical for 25, please. Get physical for 25 points, teams. If you like to watch movies, Netflix movies, YouTube movies, you can thank the laser light, the laser light that travels along fibers made of what trans... Martin Luther King. Fiber optics. Fiber optics. Give me more information, please. Oh. Um, um, LED no, light. No, that makes... Plasma? Not quite, not quite. Oxen Hill. The laser light that travels along these fibers that lets you see these movies are made of what transparent material? The fibers are made of what transparent material? Yes, please? Glass. Glass. There are glass fibers. Go red. Science potpourri for 25 points. Potpourri for 25 points, teams. If you are part of a science experiment and some of the people get the real drug, and some of them get the fake drug and don't know who gets what, and you're getting the fake one, you are getting what kind of P initialed? Martin Luther King. Placebo. Yeah, placebo. placebo. Placebo, that's exactly what you got. An ineffective drug that has inert ingredients. All right, King, you're pulling away. Where next? 
Dateline Science for 25 points. Dateline for 25 points. Come on, Oxen Hill, let's come back in this game. The Chilean miners that recently were brought up after 70 plus days were in a mine, two part answer, that mined two elements. Martin Luther King. Copper and gold. You got it. I was going to give you A, U, and C, U. You didn't even need that. Good, go. Body systems for five, please. Body systems, five points, teams. The poet Carl Sandburg described the city of Chicago as the city of big what? The body parts that football players often pad. Martin Luther King. Thighs? No. Oxen Hill. Chicago is the city of the big what? Body parts that football players often pad. Head? Shoulder, shoulder pads. So city of the big shoulders. Go, red. Dateline signs for five, please. Dateline for five points, teams. Wow. Google has done it. They just brought out a car that's probably the safest car ever designed because it does what? Martin Luther King. It stops for you? Uh, not. Uh, try again, Marcus. It detects dangerous things. It drives itself. It drives itself. One question left. Science Potpourri for five points. Here it is. On the mall last week at the Smithsonian, young aspiring paleontologists your age were picking up bones and looking at shark's teeth in celebration of National What Day? Oxen Hill? Fossil Day? That's what it was, National Fossil Day. And that is the end of this Science Bowl game. We'll be back with a wrap up and a few ending comments in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. What a terrific game. I don't know if you can keep up with these young people. They were just so sharp, so talented. We're proud of all of them. Not only am I proud of their scientific ability, but their sportsmanship. They're all congratulating each other already. Oxen Hill is wishing Martin Luther King best of luck in the next round. Our final talent today, Oxen Hill 120, Martin Luther King 315. Congratulations, brother and sister and Zach, Miss Reyes and Jada. We're going to see you, second semifinalist, joining Thomas Pullen. Oxenhill, let me see some smiles. You guys really prepared for this, and it showed. You guys are great. Vaughn and Marcus and Shannon, David and Kenna. Kenna, who's been with us for a number of years, starting back at Indian Queen. And Miss Redmond, thank you for you and to all of your colleagues for preparing this team. We loved having you here. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye-bye now.